What's up, man? Congratulations on the win. Uh, talk us through your immediate reaction to the fight and the finish. Uh, yeah, I asked Herb Dean to pinch me for a second because uh, all camp, I mean, I've been in camp for 22 weeks, right? We had to pull out of that initial fight um, beyond my control, and uh, it just nagged me every single day, so I, I stayed in camp uh, best I could, and it's oh. been a long road. We prepared for, you know, a three-round war. It's very cliche, but I knew who was in front of me. So when, when it went so smoothly, he was missing some – uh, strikes early on and I was landing and that's where he was supposed to have the advantage I started to run away with it and I was just pleasantly surprised with myself I do this thing where I keep myself down mentally and I think that it just works for me it makes for a miserable existence but uh, on fight night a pleasant surprise right I'm never disappointed in myself I'm constantly reminding myself why I belong here so it just felt like a dream man just uh, absolutely blessed to be here and I just pleasantly surprised myself tonight what sort of physical toll does a 22 week camp take on your body uh, not much, I think, when you stay training all year long. You know, we, camp, you know, Chael Sonnen used to say, camp's where little kids go in the summer, right? Like, we don't change much in camp. Maybe we go from a little more strength work to heavier uh, conditioning. Maybe we spar a little differently. But other than that, I keep the same schedule all year long. This is what I love to do. How long am I going to do this? 10, 15 years? So I can't give up every single day of my life? I'm going to do that. You know, I got a job to do. So I don't take long breaks. So. It, more mental toll than anything. You know, uh, every day I get up and I go to work because it's what I love to do and because I love my family and my coaches and my team. So uh, not a physical toll, just mentally waiting for that call, waiting for that call because we didn't get this fight until two and a half weeks out, you know. So uh, it was just keeping the vision when the circumstances kept changing. So with that in, with that in mind, are you going to just stay ready so you don't have to get ready? So if they call again, you can just bounce right back in there? Yeah, I like the Mac Life shirt. He, he, he coined the Conor McGregor phrase. Yeah, absolutely. You know, it's, everybody steals that catchphrase, but it's right. as We stay ready, and uh, that's exactly what it is. You know, it's always good to have time to ramp up, but uh, I think when we stay like we do, and I, I'm healthy, man. I, I, I don't drink. I don't touch drugs. I don't really eat bad food, but once a week on my cheat days, you know. So uh, I think that's the secret to longevity, I hope. So I'm just going to stay ready, exactly. Congrats, man. Thank you. Joe, right here, Jim Greeshaber, cage side seat. What do you think, man? 50K for the little girl? Oh, man, that would be a blessing. I looked at Dana. I don't like when guys shout it out on the camera because what's that going to do? He doesn't watch the post-fight interviews. But uh, I did look at him, and so I was like, man, I got a baby on the way. But, hey, I'm just glad to be going home with two checks, my win bonus, and uh, in one piece. So we'll see what happens. That's beyond my control. But, uh, dude, we're working during a pandemic. So I got to thank Dana White and the UFC no matter what. This whole experience has been unbelievable. Just uh, – well oiled machine and very, very fortunate to be working right now when a lot of people aren't. Have you talked to your wife yet? Oh, yeah, we FaceTime. She's crying. How long yeah. did it take her to ask you about the 50K? <laughs> yeah, she didn't. I think she, she, she it didn't? was through the tears. Yeah, there's a lot going on, a lot of emotions. Uh, my dog was in the FaceTime. It's just uh, chaos in my house right now. So they, uh, they split the team into two view viewing parties. So my coach, who couldn't be here because he fought in one last night, John Salter, he had all the guys at his place and all the crazy wives are at my house. So, uh, just chaos right now. No one's there to rope them in, calm them down. It's just pandemonium. They're all crying, doing their emotional thing. And uh, yeah, it was just a quick, I love you. I got to get to the media tent. So I'll talk to you soon. <laughs> That's a lot of support for a pregnant woman to give you with a 22 week camp and a baby ready to be born in a month. Oh, she's a rock star, man. And as uh, we got into this together, this is my 17th fight, including my amateur career. And uh, we learned how to do this together, you know? So for us, fighting is life. There is no life without fighting because we know what this is going to lead to for us. So, uh, We've just been blessed, and I've been blessed with a strong woman beside me, a strong team behind me, and uh, just a God that loves me, and I'm just very fortunate. Huge upside for you on both sides, both in the cage and outside of it. So where do you want to go from here? Where do you see yourself taking it the rest of 2020? I'm going to get on that plane tomorrow and go home and hug my family, and then uh, I'm going to watch my baby girl be born. I'm going to be training before, during, and after, and then we'll get right back to whatever the UFC wants. I think uh, a lot of guys want specific matchups or – want new contract, this, that. I'm, I'm here to work, man. That's, that, I'm just grateful for the opportunity. And that may sound cliche, but uh, that's, that's what I do, man. I take the opportunities and I try and run with it, right? I was, I was the third fight on the prelims tonight. I ended up the third fight on the main card. And, you know, my coach, Jeff Jimmo, said it. Chris Gow, my box coach, we were talking about it all day is we seize opportunities. So I'm going to take what they give me and I'm going to stretch it into a long, long, good career. So you'll go again this year? Absolutely. Absolutely, man. God willing, I'll be healthy and we'll take whatever they offer. Congrats, man. Good job. Thank you. Hey, I was here when you got your contract for Contender Series. Welcome back. Thank you. Another great win at the Apex. That, that kid right there is no joke, and you made it look easy. I mean, what are some names that you, I know you guys are already thinking down the line because to go out there and put on a performance against a kid that, like you said, a lot of people probably expected it to be more competitive, and it just wasn't that at all. Yeah. I mean, uh, styles make fights, you know. Uh, 
he's probably going to go out and have a great run. You know, I, we watched him against, I just said, I may not have an Abu Dhabi medal like Davi Ramos does, but I just think I just got, I don't know, if it's street smart. I, I'm not even from the street. I don't know. What do I have? Fight smarts? I don't know. It's just practicality, right? I just feel like I can just put it together. So, uh, you know, Davi Ramos couldn't submit him. I mean, maybe he could, but he, he didn't, you know, and Mark Madsen, Olympian. So I've got no names in mind. Uh, I'm scared of all of them, man. They're all tough dudes. We're in the toughest division in the world. So whoever they're going to put in front of me, I'm going to treat like I did Austin, right? I'm going to lose sleep over him. I'm going to stalk his page. I'm going to be ready for him. My coaches are going to watch him like fiends, and we're going to come out prepared and hopefully, again, pleasantly surprise ourselves with how prepared we can be, how tough we can be, and how much we can be a shark out there too. Were you surprised that you were able to find your range with the striking so quickly? Because, I mean, it looked like it was just academic. I mean, right away you were just you were already tagging him immediately. Yeah, I've got great training partners, man. That guy sitting right there that was in my corner, Zach DeLeon, uh, law student, right? No MMA fights yet. Spars with all of us that are fighting in the UFC belts or big promotions and, like, just a, an animal, right? I've got guys like that. i got Cody Jones, John Salter, who's a 185er, just mauling me in the wrestling and the stand-up, just staying on me. So I'm not surprised, right? i got great coaches. Chris Gow, every single day we go in there, he's obsessive-compulsive about boxing, right? He's just obsessed. He's watching footage all the time. And then I got Jeff Jimmo. All week on the pads, we were working this. Cut out at the angle. Literally, it played out just like it did on the pads. He came in. He held court all week for me. He told me what I needed to do, which was kind of different. You know, we were, we were gone for a pandemic. We didn't get up there to work together as much as we would have liked to. He came in with the blueprint, and we literally did it. Like, we worked that the last four days, right? And uh, the warm-up was good. So I'm, I'm surprised at what I can do, but I'm not surprised at what I can do with these guys behind me, right? They, some of the best minds in the game, some of the best talents in the game, and just some of the best people I know. So it's just a perfect recipe, I think. Yeah, well, it's interesting because that's what everyone says, but to actually go out there and execute is yep. very impressive. So congrats on that. One last thing, John Anik piqued my interest when he was talking about, you know, your baby girl. My first fight was three weeks before my first, my child, my first child, my son was born. And as you know, a fight camp, very stressful. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Having a... A child on the way, especially your first one, is very, very scary. So tell me, what is that like to experience both of those major life events at the same time? Uh, you know, like we talked about, and another question with my wife is so strong. My coaches are so strong. We've got a good community around us back home in Wilmington, North Carolina, our church, our family, our friends. It, it wasn't really a big issue at all, right? Everybody goes to work every single day. It just happens that I get one of the coolest jobs in the world, right? Uh, there's a lot of people struggling right now, so never really a worry in my mind. The only thing I was telling my wife was just, Hold it in until I get back. You know, other than that, uh, not really stressed about it, right? Every single day, I kiss my wife goodbye. I kiss my dogs goodbye. I'll kiss my baby girl goodbye when she's here and go to work. That's all, that's all we can do in this life as men and, and, uh, and strong people, right? So that's what I'm going to do. Keep that blue-collar mentality and keep going to work every chance I get. So, so you take the fight game, obviously. with the, You have a great attitude and a great approach. Um, but as far as the baby being on the way, how, I mean, how scared are you? Be honest. That glove touch comes in a couple weeks, right? That's the real fight. Like, I, 15 minutes, it can go bad, but it's over in 15 minutes, you know? I know, I know what I'm doing going in there, I like to think, you know? Uh, I have no idea what I'm doing with parenting. I know nothing about babies. I've never diapered anything. Uh, so we're going to figure this out on the fly, you know? No adrenaline dump, though, so that'll be nice. Hopefully no crowd watching me trying to put that diaper on. That'd be insane. Uh, I'm just going to take it in stride, man. I have some coaches, I guess. I don't know. We'll figure it out. I'll be calling people, figuring this out. It's like the fight game. We adapt quick. You will. You'll be good. <laughs> Thank you. Congrats. Good. Thank you, guys.